Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the YouTube video for week six. I am recording this on Sunday morning. Uh, this evening, your uh, first summaries are due. Um, looking ahead, um, in, uh, in two weeks, you know, you'll have your second summary due. Uh, you'll be summarizing Manuel Munoz's Leave Your Name at the Border, which is a bit longer than the than the uh, first essay that you summarized. We will continue with that uh, verse outline for summary exercise uh, in our Zoom class this coming Thursday. I think that will help you as you write your, uh, your second summaries. Uh, the main focus of this video today, though, will be on revising and editing your uh, first your, your personal narratives. Um, so, uh, first of all, I, I want to tell you that there is a difference between revising and editing. Um, and some of you may know this already. Um, when you revise, you're, you're, you're working with the whole paper. And um, you're, you're working more at the, at the, uh, the paragraph level or with, with, with large, larger chunks of, of, your, of, your, of your essay. And making decisions about whether you should move move elements around, uh, add something to the essay, take something out of the essay, um, and, and in, in this regard, the the, uh, the reverse outline technique that so far you've used to do summaries can 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 help you. I've um, posted on. Let me do a share screen here. I posted. I got to find mine. Here we go. I have posted on uh, Blackboard on the course documents a uh, reverse outline procedure. This was created by a, a fellow instructor. Um, we'll be using this later in, uh, in the semester uh, when, we, uh, when you're re revising your argumentative essays and perhaps also when you're revising your uh, uh, compare and contrast essays. Um, but but this can be useful to you right now. Uh, it's ba basically step by step. Uh, it's like a checklist of, of what you should be looking for when you reverse outlining your own writing. Uh, the introduction, the, the body paragraphs, conclusion, some other uh, questions here, useful questions to ask yourself. So so take a look at this. This may help you. Um, uh, now, even with your with, with your first uh, with, with your first essay, um, and there, there are a couple of comments that I, I want to make about your uh, drafts that, uh, in uh, regarding revising. The a lot a lot of you, um, some of you. Uh, made uh, a lot of uh, general statements in, in your in your uh, in your drafts. Um, some of that is good, You're making reference to uh, you know something that's going on in the news or uh, things like that. But in in this in this essay, I I would like to see you focus more on. Your own personal experiences and experiences of, as we discussed, experiences of your family members, friends, um, rather than making general statements about what's going on in the world uh, or, or you know what's happening in history or that sort of thing. Some of that you need some of that as sort of like glue for your essay, I suppose. But but um, I I really recommend and I I. I made comments about this in, uh, in, in your individual, uh, when I marked your individual drafts. Um, I, I would like to see you focus more on your, your uh, personal experiences for, for this essay, since it is a personal narrative. Um, the other thing is, um, regarding revising, um, I noticed that some of you came to your uh, what I would call the, the, the 
point of your uh, essays as as later later in the essay, and this uh, this is by no means uncommon. This, this is this is a very common thing uh, that happens to many writers, including me, um, where you 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 your ideas develop as you write, um, so that you might be writing a conclusion and suddenly you hit on oh that, that's what i'm writing about <laughs> and, uh so so i noticed that that, that some of you you, you you found you know what i would call we call it the point of, of the, a lot of you hit on that later in your essay so i i made comments suggesting that you at least briefly hint at that uh point in in your introduction so that the, the, the reader knows what um, the, the, the essay is, has, or has a better idea of what the essay is about. Um, so th those are two, um, two comments uh, I would make about re revising. Uh, take a look at the comments I made on your individual drafts uh, by revising. And, um, and yeah, uh, you may consider, you don't have to use a verse outline, but you may consider using it. You, you might find it uh, useful. All right, so now, now to, um, to editing. When you, when you edit, you're uh, working at, at, the, at the sentence level rather than at the paragraph level or, or at the level of the whole paper. And, and you're, you're working on things like style, and grammar, and that sort of thing. Um, there were several thing, things I noticed uh, in your your papers. Uh, several several items regarding editing that I feel I should uh, should discuss with all of you. Um, we will start with okay. Let's start with changing tenses. I noticed that, that many of you. Some of you um, seem seem to, uh, or you, you change you change verb tenses uh, hap haphazard. Um, there are, as we discussed, uh, you, you will sometimes you'll need to use present tense, and sometimes you will need to use past tense, uh, in, especially in this in this essay. But you, you shouldn't you shouldn't. Um, change ver verb tenses um, uh, haphazardly or uh, abruptly. You, 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 in general, this is not always true, but in general, you, sh you shouldn't change verb tenses uh, with, within, within a sentence. Uh, there's, there should be a reason for changing verb tenses, as we discussed. If you're talking about an event in the past, Writing past tense. When you want to reflect on it, then you would then you would switch to present tense. But there should be a reason for changing tenses. And in general, it's not always true. But in general, you shouldn't change tenses abruptly in mid sentence. It's 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 distracting to to the to the reader. But that's one thing. Changing tenses. Um, Introducing quotes. I let me share screen again. The I have a. I went to our uh, go to uh, a writer's reference uh, book here for this. This is um, this 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 gives you some advice on. Introducing quotes. Um, so some of you use material from Trayvon Generation and from, from the slur. That's fine. Um, but I, I noticed that you didn't uh, introduce the, the quotes uh, smoothly, let's, let's, let's say. So I, I made comments on your papers when I saw a situation like that. And um, please re refer to this document. Uh, and, and try to try to clean clean up how you introduce your quotes. If you have any questions, please ask them anytime. Email 
of salaries and class. Uh, uh, that's the second thing I wanted to cover as far as editing. Now, um, yes, Thomas Blesses. Here we go. Let's go to the share again. Thomas Blesses. This is very, actually, let me give you the, the PDF version of this because. Okay, let me share again. I want the, sorry folks, this is the, oh yeah, good. Uh, here, here we go, all right. So um, I noticed that many of you uh, had comma splices in your, in your dress. What is a comma splice? I have a silly example here. Uh, Joe likes to eat candy. He visits the, he visits the dentist often for checkups. This is a comma splice. You're, you're, you're taking two sentences and splicing them together with a comma. That's not good. <laughs> you, uh, there are two ways to correct this. You can either end this sentence with a period, Joe likes to eat candy, period, and then start a new sentence. He visits the, he visits the dentist walking for check. Or you can keep the comma, but then use a conjunction and but in this case, I use but. Joe likes to eat candy, candy, comma, but he visits the dentist often for checkups. Here, when it, when you use a comma splice like this, it's 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 like it's like trying to use a comma as a conjunction, and that, and that's 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 wrong. So um, I made I pointed out I didn't point out all of them in in your when I found them because there just wasn't enough room on Blackboard to, to, to do it. But I pointed out uh, when I found comma splices in your drafts, I, I pointed some of them out anyway uh, to, to get you started with, with, with fixing that. Other thing is, well, the other thing is that sometimes you do, <laughs> you do want to use commas and I noticed some of you didn't. Um, and also some of you had run on sentences in, in your Dress. So um, I have another silly example here um, about those two uh, topics. Uh, and again, we're sticking with Joe and the dentist here and Kenny and Kenny. So um, after school yesterday, Joe visited the dentist and she found after giving him a thorough examination that he didn't have any cavities, but he needed to have his teeth cleaned. That sentence, sentence runs on and there are no pauses. Um, and that needs to be fixed. That's, that's, it's, it's, um, it's not easy to read. It's certainly not easy to, to say <laughs> out loud. Um, so I, here, here's a, uh, just an example of how I would fix this. After school yesterday, comma, pause. It, a comma is a pause, a, a period is a full stop, right? So after school yesterday, Pause. Joe visited the dentist. Full stop. She found after giving him a thorough examination that he didn't have any cavities. Not a pause. But he needed to have his teeth cleaned. That's one way to, to fix this up. Right? Um, I will, and in fact, you know, uh, if you find this useful, I'll, I'll post this on uh, under course documents. Um, just as a, as a guide to get started in, uh, in, in fixing these problems, comma splices, run on sentences, and, uh, not, and not using commas. I, I know it's, it's, it sounds contradictory, but it, it is, it, commas are, are tough. It, it, it takes practice to know when, to, when and where to use uh, commas. Um, and I'll try to help you with that. All right, so let me see here. I've covered. Uh, run sentences, comma splices, changing tenses, general statements, introducing quotes, um, your, um, the, the idea of developing uh, your ideas as, as you write things. Um, I should also talk about um, MLA formatting. And, um, oh, and yes, um, okay, there's a couple of issues to discuss here. First of all, somebody did not submit in 
docx or pdf format you, you submit it in text box i can't comment on your uh work if you submit it text box all right because blackboard won't let me use the commenting tools so please please in the future submit writing some assignments like this essays summaries etc uh, submit them either docx or pdf all right and then some of you it should be MLA formatted, but even before I get to that, some of you submitted single spaced work. That, I, please double space. Single, it is very difficult for me to comment on single spaced documents. It's very hard to read also. Um, so please, please double space. And, and double spacing is uh, inherent in MLA formatting. You should be, many of you did not use proper MLA format. Um, you should be, and this document is on, let me make it more viewable here. This document is under course documents, okay? I know it's crude looking, but um, you need to use the header, you need to use the running header with the last name and page number. Um, you need to turn off add space after paragraph, add space before paragraph. Some of you did not do that. So you wound up with an extra space after each paragraph. It should be double spaced throughout, all right? Some of you did not have a title, but that's not really MLA formatting, but um, well, I suppose it is. You need a title for your essay. And I, I, may, I commented on that when I found that in, 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 your, in your drafts. So, um, yeah, please, um, please in the future, for your revisions and for your other essays, please use MLA formatting like this. And then the last thing I want to cover, some of you used the, uh, use brief quotes from Trayvon Generation and from the slur, that's good. Um, some of you did not uh, use uh, or uh, include a, work cited list. Um, some of you did not, um, let me see, uh, there were, maybe there may, may have been one or two of you who did not do the, the uh, citation in the text, either introducing the quote with the author's name or parenthetical citation. You should either, if you're with these, oh, oh one other thing. So one of you found a, a, a course packet somewhere. I, I don't know where you got that, it's fine. I mean, it's the same essay. Um, so uh, that's okay for the purposes of this essay. Uh, and that, apparently that had page numbers. So then you would use, you would indicate page, page numbers in your parenthetical documentation, right? I, I've been using online uh, copies of these essays. So I, I've given you here the, what the work cited list should, should look like. I mean, if you only use one of these, only include one of the essays, and then it would be work cited. Okay. Um, if you use these, these are online sources. They do not have page numbers. Uh, so then you would just either, well, you, you, you can use the author's name as you introduce the quote, or you would put Alexander or Hong as a parenthetical citation. Okay, so please make sure you include work size. This is just to give you some practice to get you used to it because you're going to need to do this in, in really all your work in, in, in college, um, in, in, in the humanities and social sciences, I mean, um, and in, in sciences too. And mo most, most of the work you do in, in college, you're going you're gonna to need to do a, a some form of bibliography, whether it's more cited or APA or Chicago style, whatever. Um, okay, let me stop the share here. I think that's all I wanted to cover. If I, if I forgot anything, I will uh, email you. Um, we have You have a discussion board. We're back to discussion board this coming week. I have posted a prompt for uh, a talk to teachers. Uh, please uh, make your posts by, by Tuesday evening and your responses by Wednesday evening. 
and um, email me office hours. Um, otherwise, I will see you on, on Thursday. And goodbye for now.